This is Pure Polino on UBN Radio. Stargazer, food taster, fun chaser. Indulging in the culinary creations from the top restaurants and top bloggers across the nation and around the globe. Charting the course for people and celebrities over the entire astrological universe. Chasing down fun around every street corner. Your Polino starts now. Oh my gosh. Happy Tuesday, everybody. This is Pure Polino. My name is Michelle Polino, and this is the culinary culture part of our week. Hit it. <laughs> We're rocking out now. <laughs> it is. It's two minutes long. Oh, shice. Um... Okay, we can we can pot that down. It's it's what? Oh, there go. <laughs> wow, that was uh, yeah, that stopped all right. Welcome to the show. My name again is Michelle Felino. That was of course the Olympic theme. Today we are all about Sochi. Well, not all about Sochi. Uh, we're definitely about Russia. We're talking to on on the show today. We have guests. Dara Goldstein, she's an author of four cookbooks, two of them about Russian food. And we're gonna find all we're gonna find out about what the Olympian Olympians are eating in Sochi. And uh I can guarantee you this, they are drinking lots of vodka. I can guarantee you that. Um we'll be talking vodka and caviar and borscht and all the fun things. But first, before we get to that, gosh, we have a lot on our plate today. Before we get to that, we have the foodie five. One, two, three, four, five. Which I think is kind of hilarious today. And we have an honorary, we have a, an honorary, uh, I guess, part of the Foodie Five today because Kraft, I'm going to pull this up on the internet while I talk to you. Kraft yesterday announced there will be no more preservatives in its cheese. And I'm thinking to myself, I don't even know how they can call it cheese, right? Because it's so gross to begin with. And well, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I don't see anybody rushing out to go grab the craft. But that was an honorary mention in the Foodie Five because, well, there are so many great stories this week. It just blows my mind. So let's get to them. Let's get to them. This is number five. So you decide that your New Jersey steakhouse needs to serve a 22 ounce prime rib. And of course, that 22 ounce prime rib is large enough to have a name. So you think and you think and you think. And then all of a sudden, Chris Christie comes up. <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> okay, so Charlie's other brother in Mount Holly, uh, which is right next to Philly, Philly, yo, is serving a 22 ounce prime rib named the Chris Christie cut. It is $37.99, comes with vegetables and potatoes. Uh, and I'm sure the beef is probably going to be great, but apparently there is a long wait for that steak to get to you. It has to go through a couple of roadblocks in the kitchen before it gets to you. But I'm, that's a, there it is. <laughs> Two shows on Friday, try the veal. Obviously, the steak's not so good, try the veal. Okay, number four, uh, a group of Girl Scouts. This is horrible because I do news during the week for a couple of stations. One of the stations that I do is in Florida, which I think they should take a saw and just saw off that part of, you know. No, I actually have a lot of friends in Florida. But some of the stuff that they do is, is just crazy. This story came out of Florida. A group of Girl Scouts was robbed Sunday while selling cookies outside of Winn-Dixie in Fort Lauderdale. Witnesses say a group of 8 to 10 men approached the table where two mothers and their two daughters were selling Girl Scout cookies. The group left. Then two men came back. The men allegedly then snatched a cell phone from a 10-year-old girl. What kind of human being does that? Not only did they snatch a cell phone, they grabbed a bunch of cookies and the money. Yeah, pretty nasty people hanging out at the Florida Winn-Dixie. If you're driving in Florida right now, just drive on by the Winn-Dixie right now. Drive on by. Okay, this is number three. It. I've been wondering about this all weekend because I don't know if you've been, uh, obviously on Facebook. It's all over Facebook. There was a dumb Starbucks 
that opened up in Los Files in, in Los Angeles. A lot of people were speculating, was it Banksy? He's a uh, British artist, graffiti artist, painter, activist. Was it uh, a disgruntled worker? Was a comedian Nathan Fielder? Well, if you guessed Nathan Fielder of Comedy Central's Nathan For You, turns out you were right. Fielder showed up at a press conference yesterday. This all happened within like 24 to 48 hours. And when asked why he was doing it, he said the American dream. He said he really appreciates Starbucks. He doesn't think they're dumb. And he also said he planned to open up a second location in Brooklyn and keep expanding until they stop him. Uh, but basically, it just turned out to be a huge Comedy Central gag. However, they did sell coffee for a while. But apparently, uh, California, it, they called up the health department. And the health department eventually shut them down because of licenses. So they had to stop selling coffee. And right now, they just are art, I guess. At least that's what they're calling themselves. Um Right, I'm, I'm reading somebody in the in the chat room. Starbucks is far from dumb now. I, on the other hand, spending five hundred. What? You're spending five hundred a month at Starbucks? Yeah, that's crazy. That's cray cray. Ha <laughs> ha! <laughs> that's cray cray. Okay, so <laughs> that was number three. Yes. Come on, this gets better and better. Number two. Do we have the audio clips for number two loaded in? Oh, shit. We don't? What is it? I don't know. I don't know here. Yeah. James. Gary James. Is it, it loaded in there? I guess. Yeah. Oh, cool. Okay, here we go. So I really don't want gays around. Any man, any man that would compromise his body would compromise anything. Yeah. So that was Oklahoma restaurateur. Gary James, and he started a media firestorm when he told local news that he can spot a freak or a faggot, this is what he said, coming into a restaurant. And what he tells the reporter is that he doesn't want him in his, you heard the quote, there's actually two. Uh, he tells the reporter that he doesn't want him, he doesn't want them. This is what he said to the reporter. He doesn't want blacks. He doesn't want handicapped people. He doesn't want people on welfare. This is what he said to a reporter that he doesn't want coming in his restaurant. Go ahead. I've been in business 44 years. I think I can spot a freaker. I really don't want gays around. I don't deal with these, pe these people walking down the street with no jobs, welfare. If I reached over there and slapped the out of it, you, you should be offended. But to say, chink, you know, or me, somebody call me a bigot, that doesn't bother me. Why should it? Yeah. Yeah. They are alive and well in the Midwest, ladies and gentlemen. They are alive and well. So here's the great thing that you and I can do and have some fun with this, guys. Now, Yelpers are venting their frustrations by leaving prank reviews of his restaurant online on Yelp.com. So I would go to it. It's called Chicaro's. And it's in Oklahoma. I would absolutely look it up right now and leave your funniest. Because what they're doing is they're calling it a gay club now. They're sending gays specifically to his restaurant. They're calling it the best gay club in and around Oklahoma. There's even a fake Facebook page. It's called gary Chicaros. C-H-I-C-A-R-O-S. Now, to me, that sounds kind of ethnic. If I was driving through Oklahoma, I'd be like, Chicaros. Sounds like we can get some Cuban food. <laughs> right? Yeah. No. Awesome, right? So crazy. So get on Yelp. Go get give your best review of the best damn gay club you could ever be in in Oklahoma. Oh, yeah. We're going to get that guy back. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Okay. And here it is. Number one. I told you it was crazy this week. It's all because of Mercury Retrograde. I'm telling you right now. The number one foodie <laughs> story of the week. A Frenchman has been sentenced to spend the next year in prison after assaulting a woman with an improvised weapon snatched from her fridge. Fridge. I was going to say refrigerator, like a, a good Philly girl does. From her refrigerator <laughs> during an argument. 
According to a French newspaper, the 35-year-old guy was convicted of poultry assault. I didn't even know that was a crime. I didn't even know that was a crime. He attacked his ex with a frozen chicken. Now, for his crime, he was sentenced to two years in prison. He's, could you imagine his cellmate? Yeah, bud, what you in for? Poultry assault. What? Poultry assault. <laughs> what? Police said the man was drunk. Really? You think? When he arrived at his ex's home, at which point they got into an argument for reasons that at this point are unclear to everybody. The inebriated man ran to the woman's refrigerator after she was getting the best of him. Okay, if, she, if a woman's getting the best of you, don't go to the fridge. Just run out the door. I mean... That's the best advice I could give you. So he goes to the fridge to look for something to use as a weapon. At which point, in that entire refrigerator, he didn't go to the to the to the drawers where the the silverware. He didn't get a paddle or anything. There's there's dishes, nothing. He goes to the fridge, and he reaches for the frozen chicken. Yeah, he hit her with the bird. Threatened to kill her with the bird. Then he smashed up part of her apartment with the bird. (laughs) Breasts are dangerous. Thank you, Elena. Breasts are really, breasts are so dangerous. (laughs) Police said the woman's injuries caused her to take 10 days off of work. I'm sorry, boss. Hold on. So, yeah, I, I got attacked by a frozen chicken. What? Yeah. Take 10 days. Now 15. Yeah. So uh, so she got 10 days off, and it was not the first time the man was convicted of domestic assault. Not the first time that he was convicted of domestic assault, but it was the first time ever in the history of making, in the history of mankind, that someone was convicted of assault with a frozen chicken. There it is. So from frozen chickens to the frozen tundra of the Russian landscape... As we taste Russia with Dara Goldstein, who's authored four cookbooks, two on Russian cuisine. That is coming up next, so stay with us right here. Oh, there's the rest of the song. 